police apply now and TAC ditch the distractions. I'm Bianca Chatfield and we're part way through round seven of Super Netball. Ash Brazel, it must be a little tough for you watching at the moment because your magpies are sitting last on the ladder. Well, B, it's the first time we haven't started with the positive. Sorry about <laughs> that. Slam me straight right in there. But, yeah, it is tough and it's, it's tough... Um, being in Melbourne and watching my team not be successful and no team wants to be at the bottom of the ladder and unfortunately it's my team. But I think this game was the toughest loss we've had yet. Every other game, you could say, just been down to a quarter. Like I think there's been a couple of games where the first quarter we're down by 10 and then we only lose by one or two. Where this game, Fever had it all over us and um, I can only imagine what it would be like because we're in the hub. So it's something that you're just going to have to live with until we have that next game, I guess. So it was a 14-goal loss to Fever. What would it be like, do you think, for the players? I mean, you're obviously in touch with them all and the staff. To be in hub life at the moment, to not have an escape, it's OK when you're winning and things are going well. It's easy to cope being in such a confined environment. What is it like for them at the moment? And do you think it's going to get harder if they don't improve and start winning? Well, I've spoken to a few of the girls and, and they all seem to still be in good spirits and they know that it's we just really need to follow our process, follow our game plan and yeah, just stand up to all of the other teams, which we're not doing at the moment. But I think probably the hardest, I guess, that would be dealing with it would be our physio and our assistant coach, both away from their families. Um, I know Kate, our assistant coach, is away from her three kids and her husband and it's OK when you're winning, but when you're losing, I think you just miss them that little bit more and, and it would be hard for the kids as well. Oh, absolutely would be. Mm. We'll get to more of the games that have happened so far. It's time now to get to the agenda. When you're on your phone, you're driving blind, ditch the distractions. So coming up first for me, I want to focus on West Coast fever, but I'm going to call them West Coast Fowler. I don't know who put that on Twitter, but I absolutely love seeing that because it's so true. Janelle Fowler has been absolutely dominating. Let's take a look at her scoring stats. The only time she's got under 50 goals a game, which is a massive score in itself, was round five against the Vixens when they had a significant loss to the Vixens. But every time she is scoring at least 50 goals, in being in the 60s a few times, she's averaging 92%. She's had 11 super shots, which you don't often see mm. for a goal shooter. I don't like pumping up goal shooters too much, but Janelle Fowler has been unbelievable and in such great form. She's 31 years old, so she's still got plenty of years left in her. I'm glad you said that. <laughs> yeah, she's, she's 198 centimetres tall, so we know it's so tough to take her on. But she's just absolutely killing it, isn't she, in the fever lineup? Oh, she's a powerhouse. And it's not just this year. Every year that you come across Neil Fowler, even back when she was playing for a New Zealand side, you know that as a mid-quarter, if we didn't stop the ball before we got to the circle edge, there was no hope. And I feel for any goalkeeper playing against her, but <laughs> I actually think it's, you know, as a wing defence centre, this is more your responsibility as it is the goalkeepers. There has been a lot of focus actually on that in the goalkeeper, and it was Jeeva Mentor for the Magpies playing against her last night. There's a lot of focus, isn't there, that it's the goalkeeper that's got to stop her. Mm. And as we both know, it's not yeah. at all. The defence has to start from the midcourt, if not the goalers, if it's a long court play because you need that pressure to be able to stop that high ball going in. And another thing I'm finding really interesting about the Fever lineup, Janelle Fowler being so dominant, is there is a lot of focus on the little goaling opportunities or the, the goals that Alice Teague Neal and Kaylee Stanton are shooting. But who cares? They don't need to be shooting. They can just be feeders, can't they? Yeah, and I think that's one, I guess, positive that Fever have. And, and why not take it as an advantage? Because... You can, she, well, well, Alice, if Alice gets the shot, she can actually put it up. But if she doesn't need to, why do it? You know that you can have that, you know, she puts it up, she pretends to take the shot and does a little flick off. Now the ball's under the post. So if I'm Fever, I'd be doing that every day of the week. And if I was Alice or Kalia, I'd, why, why worry about the stats when you're getting the wins? The Fever did have a great game. Mm. However, on the weekend, it's very topsy-turvy. Anything's happening at the moment. But on the weekend that we saw Firebirds actually get their first win of the season. It's been over 370 days since they have scored a win. Mm. And they actually did that against the Fever on Saturday. It was a great performance by the Firebirds. They are starting to find their rhythm, aren't they? Yeah, and massive win against the Fever. Like, Fever is sitting top four. So to get a win against a top four team, I think this is just puts um, Queensland in good stead for the rest of the uh, rounds. Yeah, it sure does. That was the agenda. Ditch the distractions. 
It's now time to get to the nitty gritty. Thanks to Lexus of Berwick who are here for you. Contact the team and visit lexusofberwick.com.au. No issues for me to talk about this week in the nitty gritty. Instead, I want to focus on a champion of our game, a player that we have both admired, that we've both played against and who has just been an absolute standout, not only for Sunshine Coast Lightning, but for the Silver Ferns. Listen to some of these stats. Laura Langman, the most capped Silver Fern ever to play the game. She's had 163 test caps. She debuted as an 18-year-old. She's now 34. I'm sure she won't mind me saying that. Com Games gold medal. She's won World Champs most recently in 2019. She has just been an absolute phenomenal player. And, you know, she's been an arch enemy of ours. Both of us have played against the Silver Ferns with her. And you, you hate seeing her dominate because she's so hard to play against. She's so fit. She probably gets every second ball the Silver Ferns ever throw because she is just the absolute link between the attack and defence end for the Silver Ferns. So, I just want to say congratulations, Laura Langman, for a huge international career. Uh, it's just been an honour to play against you. Um, but, Ash, you've actually directly had to play against her. I've just been watching her. <laughs> what is it actually like to take on someone like Laura Langman? Oh, and you hate to love her because yes. she's <laughs> so talented, but she's so good as a player, but she's an even better human. Even on court, she's just one of the nicest players I've ever played against. And she's someone that when you know you're going up to battle on her... You do your homework so much, like, you, and you can't not because if you don't, you're in trouble. And just thinking about it when you were talking then, if this is – she's retired from international, I got to play on her on her last quarter as a Silver Fern. Oh. So I'm pretty <laughs> stoked about that. But um, that was probably the only quarter I've played on her as a Fern and me being a Diamond player. And it is probably one of the highlights of my career just to be able to wear the Australian dress and play on – in my opinion, the best netballer to ever play the game. Yeah. I just think, yeah, she's a phenomenal athlete and I'm so glad it's just retiring from the Ferns because I really hope she continues playing SSN because she's just an amazing player to watch and an amazing player to come up against. Yeah, couldn't agree with you more. That is the nitty gritty. Congratulations, Laura Langman. We hope you stay around for the Sunshine Coast Lightning for a lot longer so we can keep watching you play. Thanks to Lexus of Berwick who are here for you. Ash Brazel, this is your segment. As always, Brazilian, what have you got for us this week? Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> <laughs> so this week's Brazilian award goes to another good human behaviour. And there's actually two mentions and it goes to a netball team this time. Yep. So this goes out to the Giants netball team. Um, I just think the way they've handled themselves this last week has just been unbelievable. And I'm going to start with the Giants bench from last night's win. When Seabass put up that last shot, the whole team or the whole bench erupted. And like, <laughs> look, look at, at this, this photo <laughs> here. You have um, the players that are sitting on the bench losing it. But then you also have someone in the background who I think, is that their 13th player? Yeah. Just <laughs> jumping up as well. Like, so it's not just the people on the bench, but it's like play people that are in the stand is just, I just think that's unbelievable. And for me... I would, want to, I would want my team to be like that if we've got a win. You don't have to be on the court. You don't have to be on the bench. But you were just so excited to actually get that win. So well done to the Giants netball on that. But also a big shout out to Joe Harton and Julie Fitzgerald. Um, you know, there's been so much talk about Christiana Manua about mm. getting sent off. But this week she got interviewed and um, I think that was such a big thing. She was obviously nervous having to talk about it. And what you couldn't or you couldn't see when the camera was focused on her is that they had the captain and the coach just standing off camera just to show the support of them. And what I love about that, it was just genuine love and care because if it wasn't genuine, you would have had the captain arm around, I'm here yes. for support, but they were off camera just doing the right thing. So well done, Giants Netball, Joe Harton and Julie Fitzgerald. I just think, yeah amazing this week. The way that you've handled everything has been phenomenal. Just a question off the back of that, Ash. Do you think the bench is becoming more involved this season because of the rolling subs, because more players are getting an opportunity to get out there every game. We're not seeing the set seven and then the set five stay on the bench for the entire game. Do you think that is making it a bit more teamy out there now? I think so, and I think that will probably flow from the teams that are winning and the teams that aren't doing so well. Like, you've just got to stay focused if you're on the bench, if you're on the court. It doesn't matter where you are. You need to be 100% in the game because it shows if you have come on to the... Um, from the bench to the court and you haven't been involved, yes. you, you get shown up pretty quickly. So you need to stay focused. But you look in previous years, let's, let's go back to last year, the Swifts, 
every win that they had, it didn't matter if a player hadn't touched the court, they were losing it. And I think by having that good culture, that's when they you were get losing the wins. it in a good way. You mean? I'll lose it. Yeah. Excitement. <laughs> <laughs> I wish they were losing, but they weren't. <laughs> um, and I just think, yeah, that just shows a good culture, a good team, and. Um, yeah, well done again for the Giants. Yes, well done, Giants. <laughs> it's now time to get to the final say. Victoria Police are recruiting now. Search police careers and apply to be a force for good. All right, Ash, I'm going to throw it over to you again. What have you got this time? So this week, I want to just go back to our first episode when round one, you talked about what hub life would be like in uh -oh. rounds five, six and seven. <laughs> But I really do think there's going to be a lot of energy and a lot of positivity around the Victorian teams and getting them through. But I think it's going to be really costly that they've been away from home for so long once we start getting into round five, round six, round seven. So oh, I don't know what the mental toll will be on the two teams that are away from home. <laughs> now, a big thing is you did say it would be costly and we were talking about win-loss ratio. Yeah. But the Vixens are doing really well. But you do mention that it takes a mental toll. <laughs> and I think you were right because I think we have a few players losing it just a little bit and it shows on their social media. So let's take a look now. love about this is it is the Swifts and the Vixens you know like two teams that are doing extremely well but we're still seeing personality we're seeing a little bit of crazy but I love it yes I am loving it too I didn't I said it I said something was going to happen when we got to round seven uh, but I am enjoying it and you know what the best thing about that is that both teams are playing so well at oh, the moment unreal. as yeah. you mentioned and that's what I want to do for my final say this weekend we get to see the Vixens taking on the Swifts two of the yeah. standout teams and Add in Sunshine Coast Lightning there as well, but two of the standout teams for the season, and we finally get to see them go head to head. Uh, I mean, I'm going to put my Vixens hat on because I think the Vixens are playing so well. Kate Eddy has been a standout at wing defence and goal defence occasionally, but really giving Emily Mannix and Joe Weston, our TikTok favourites, uh, <laughs> giving them a, just a bit of backup and a bit of extra support. And I just think she's been a standout in the intercept she's been taking too. Mm. If you put your Swifts hat on, what do you think they have to do and what's been, what have you been liking about their lineup? Well, I actually think this game will come down to one end and normally say it's a defence game or an attacking game but I reckon it's going to come down to two of our favourites the, yeah. the Manic show like down the end and Weston versus the two goalers with the Swift so whoever can win that end of the court I think is going to win if we can see Housby take those two point shots if she can stand up are we going to see Garbin are we going to see Sam Wallace Whoever stands up in that end, I think we're going to see the win Okay well give me your final tip then I'm going to say Vixens by three Ooh I, yeah, I'm going to go Swifts yeah, yeah, but how but many? For how on. many? We'll replay this footage to another episode. Let's see how we went. Let's go one, and it's going to be on the final shot. Oh, OK. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. <laughs> well, that was Centre Court for another week. Thanks for joining me, Ash. Thanks for having me again, V. Thanks to TAC. When you're on your phone, you are driving blind. Ditch the distractions. And, of course, Victoria Police, who are recruiting now. Search police careers and apply now to be a force for good. We will be back next week.